Hello everyone, welcome to Yellow Pages Nursing. In today's video, we will be discussing about endotracheal suctioning. Before entering into the session, if you have not subscribed our channel, please subscribe our channel and do not forget to hit the bell icon to receive instant notifications. Let's get into the session. What is endotracheal suctioning? Suctioning is described as the mechanical aspiration of pulmonary secretions by using a suction catheter from a patient with an artificial airway in place or position. Here, the artificial airway for suctioning is the endotracheal tube. We will be discussing certain facts about endotracheal suctioning under the following headings, indications, catheter selection, free oxygenation, types of suction, depth of suction, suction pressure and duration of a suction. These are really going to be useful for the nurses while performing endotracheal suctioning. Let's begin with the indications for endotracheal suction. The decision to suction should be based on individual patient assessment and the following clinical signs that may indicate the need for suctioning. Unnecessary suctioning should be avoided to prevent infection and complications. Some of the clinical signs or therapeutic indications for suctioning are decreased oxygen saturation levels, visible or audible secretions, example rattling or bubbling sounds, audible with or without a stethoscope, deteriorating blood gas values like increased PCO2, changes in respiratory rate and pattern with increased respiratory distress, Suspected endotracheal tube obstruction, ventilator alarms that is increased proximal airway pressure or decreased tidal volume, during special procedures like bronchoscopy and endoscopy, after chest physiotherapy, and before extubation. And the diagnostic indication for endotracheal suction is sputum sampling. Next is catheter selection. Now, why do we have to select an appropriate size suction catheter for AT suctioning? During endotracheal suctioning, if we are using inappropriate suction catheter, that is, either small catheter or large suction catheter, it may cause tracheal damage or mucosal trauma and hypoxia. For example, if the catheter is too small, it will not be adequate to remove secretions so, repeated attempts will be necessary which have also been shown to damage the trachea. In other case, if a large catheter is used, this will occlude the tracheal tube which may cause hypoxia. This can be minimized by using the appropriate sized suction catheter. Now, how to select an appropriate size of suction catheter for ET suctioning? It has been recommended that the diameter of the suction catheter should be no more than half the internal diameter of the tracheal tube. Now, when we take a look at both the images, we have a word written ID, that is internal diameter. So, this image shows two suction catheters with internal diameters 8 and 6. Let's take the suction catheter with internal diameter 6 as an example. We have an image of cross-section of the catheter with internal diameter 6 and the external diameter will be 8. When we perform an endotracheal suctioning, always consider an internal diameter. And this internal diameter will be mentioned in all the endotracheal tubes. If we know the size or the internal diameter of the endotracheal tube, it will be easy to select the appropriate size suction catheter by using the following formula. External diameter of suction catheter should be no more than half internal diameter of artificial airway, that is endotracheal tube. The first formula to select the appropriate size suction catheter is internal diameter multiplied by 3 by 2 and with that answer use the Next, larger front size. For example, when we look at the image, the size of the endotracheal tube is 8, that is the internal diameter. And we multiply it by 3, which is 24, and then dividing it by 2, we get 12. So the next larger front size is 14, and the suction catheter size will be 14. 
the other formula will be internal diameter multiplied by 2 and with the answer use the next smallest french size for example size or internal diameter of the ET tube is 8 we multiply it by 2 and we get the answer 16 the next smaller size will be 14 and hence the suction catheter to be used will be 14 french and one more easier formula is internal diameter of ET tube multiplied by 2 and then minus it by 2 for example ET tube size or internal diameter is 8 multiplying it by 2 we get 16 and we minus it by 2 answer is 14 which is the appropriate size suction catheter so so far we discuss three formulas for which we obtain the same answer and you can use any formula which will be comfortable next is pre-oxygenation how to provide pre-oxygenation and why to provide pre-oxygenation why do we provide pre-oxygenation pre-oxygenation is a technique of increasing inspired oxygen immediately prior to the suction procedure to increase arterial oxygen saturation Pre-oxygenation may minimize the hypoxemia and other adverse effects associated with endotracheal suctioning. For example, if a patient has high oxygen and PEEP requirements and or or is known to desaturate to clinically significant levels, pre-oxygenation should be considered. Now, how to pre-oxygenate? If pre-oxygenating, use the ventilator capability to deliver 100% oxygen Ventilators have options like O2 support, suction support, hyperventilate, or pre-oxygenate. Next is types of suctioning. There are two types. Open endotracheal suctioning, otherwise called OES, and closed system suctioning, otherwise called CSS. In open endotracheal suctioning, patient is temporarily removed from the ventilator to perform OES with the help of a suction catheter. When we disconnect the breathing circuit from the ventilator while performing suctioning, there may be chances to develop desaturation, hypoxia, and cross infection. In closed system suctioning, patient remains attached to the ventilator and an inline catheter is used for closed suction. Comparing closed system suctioning to open system, it is physiologically better tolerated. It causes less desaturation. There will be less incidence and length of bradycardia. Closed system suctioning prevents hypoxia and decrease in lung volume. It lessens the spread of infection to patients and staffs. Next, coming to depth of suctioning. Deep suctioning and shallow suctioning. Here, there is an image of trachea showing insertion of ET tube, which is 4 to 5 cm away from carina, that is the junction of trachea. Now, the second image shows the insertion of suction catheter, which is 1 cm beyond the length of the endotracheal tube, which we call shallow suctioning. In the third image, the insertion of suction catheter is almost reaching the carina and this we call it as deep suctioning. Shallow suctioning is otherwise called premature suction technique. This determines insertion approximately 0.5 to 1 cm beyond the length of the endotracheal tube that is shallow suctioning. It is minimally invasive. The catheter is inserted only to the tip of the endotracheal tube. This avoids injury to the airway. No cuff is stimulated with shallow endotracheal suctioning. Maneuver will only clear secretions from within the lumen of the endotracheal tube. This is an example of the image of suction catheter showing the markings of the centimeters. The endotracheal tube is fixed at the level of 28 centimeter. As we discussed in shallow suctioning, the length of the suction catheter to be inserted should be 0.5 to 1 cm beyond the length of the ET tube. Because the length of the ET tube is fixed at 28 cm, 
the length of suction catheter to be inserted will be 29 that is plus 1. So when we are inserting the suction catheter the level of suction catheter at 29 cm should be at the arrow level shown in the image. Next is deep suctioning. The catheter is inserted until it is beyond the tip of the endotracheal tube and touches the carina. It is usually needed when there are large amounts of secretion in the lower airways. Deep suctioning causes mucosal injury and the potential for bleeding, vagal stimulation and bradycardia, mucosal ulceration and necrosis, inflammation, infection, desaturation. Next comes suction pressure. For adult, the appropriate suction pressure is 120 to 150 mm Hg. If the suction pressure is high, it may cause damage to respiratory mucosa and destruction of epithelial cilia of the airways. Next comes duration of endotracheal suctioning. The duration is maximum for 10 seconds. Why? Because in some patients, suctioning may also stimulate the vagus nerve, triggering hypoxia and bradycardia. Suctioning itself can also cause hypoxia. Hence, it is important to ensure you are utilizing an effective technique and that you never suction longer than a few seconds, where most guidelines recommend 10 to 15 seconds. Last but not least, precautions with endotracheal suctioning include raised intracranial pressure, pulmonary hypertension, pulmonary edema, pulmonary hemorrhage. These conditions may be exacerbated by suctioning and extra precautions should be taken. So here you go with endotracheal suctioning. If you find this video useful, please like it and please subscribe it and do not forget to hit the bell icon to receive instant notifications. Thanks for watching and have a nice day.